Hi friends, it's Nicole Spore here today for Lawn Fawn and I'm super excited to share this Fortune Teller Tabby Reveal Wheel card with you. This features the brand new Fortune Teller Tabby Stamps Dies, the Reveal Wheel Circle Add-on and the Reveal Wheel Circle Template. So this is really, really cute and fun. I know I've mentioned this many times here on my channel and on my blog, but the Reveal Wheel Interactive Dies are some of my very favorite inter interactive dies ever. I am going to go ahead and line up this circle add-on with the Reveal Wheel die. I'm going to tape it in place with a little post-it tape, and we're going to die cut this from some smooth white cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and pop this out. I did take the stamps and things I was going to use and laid them out so I had an idea if everything was going to fit. So here's that fortune teller tabby. You can see how the crystal ball will look. But I also am using this as a guide to know where to put my landscape along the bottom because we're going to build this scene of the fortune teller tabby up on her table with her crystal ball and then all of these adorable little critters kind of sitting looking up at her, which I think is really fun. The upon a star and keep on swimming critters, it's all their backsides and they're like looking up. And so I'm incorporating some older product in with newer, which is always one of my favorite things to do, but I think they really work so super well with this particular image. Now to build my sky, I started out with Wilted Violet, which is this beautiful purple. Um, this is, these products, the Fortune Teller Tabby and anything you're seeing during the August 2019 Inspiration Week here with Lawn Fine features fall products. Uh, specifically. This is the fall and winter release. Um, so they will work for Halloween, but what I like about this is while it kind of has that Halloween vibe to it, definitely doesn't have to be Halloween themed. This is a very encouraging type of card. I love encouragement type cards because they work for so many different things. So I think this could really be mailed out at any time, especially depending on what sentiments you want to use. In addition to Wilted Violet, I'm using chipped sapphire and black soot distress inks. You're going to see me move back and forth between those inks, blending and getting that seamless blend of color. The majority of the wilted violet is really not going to be that bright, bright purple that you see because we're pulling that blue, the black into the blue, the blue into the purple. It just gives that beautiful undertone that I'm going for there. So now I'm going to clean up my work surface and then I'm really, really excited about this. I was going to spritz this with water and I immediately changed my mind because Lawn Fawn came out with Liquid Stardust and this is an awesome little product. So I'm just going to squirt a little bit onto my glass work surface and water it down so that it goes a little further. I'm going to pick it up with a paintbrush and splatter it over my inked background. Because I'm using distress inks and they react with water, it's going to kind of wick away. But where, when you add water, it's just some distressed watermarks. This Stardust product is going to give that glittery effect. Hopefully when I hold this up in a little bit, you can kind of see that. It's going to have a shimmer to it, which is so beautiful and awesome. Especially for this type of card where I'm doing this night sky, I love the glittery effect and all these little dots. And I really kind of went overboard um, adding lots of this to the background because the splatters are so little because we're using a paintbrush and I love, love, love that shimmery effect in the sky. Next, I did die cut another partial panel using the reveal wheel so it'll line up perfectly. And we're going to take a simple stitched hillside border and die cut a border for the bottom part of this card. This is where I was talking about using the fortune teller tabby as a guide to know exactly where I need my landscape to fit along the bottom edge there. So I die cut this and I've got this beautiful little border here. And I'm going to ink up my border now with peeled paint and forest moss distress inks. Definitely going for the deeper, richer jewel tones. I know it's still 
kind of summertime. There's a lot of back to school going on, but fall will be here before we know it. So I definitely was trying to give more of that fall vibe and feel to this. So there is what it looks like. I went ahead and did that off camera. I'm gonna glue my landscape in place along the bottom edge of the card, and there is the background for our design here today. So the really pretty sky, we're gonna have our fortune teller sitting here, we're gonna have a sentiment stamped and embossed along the bottom edge from the fortune teller tabby stamp set, and now we're ready to stamp and color our images that we're using for our design. I am using the Ink on 3 No Line Coloring Fade Out Ink so that I can color with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I'm stamping all of these images on Bristol Smooth cardstock, and we're going to do no line coloring, die cut all of our images, and then pop them in place onto our scene. The tabby here with the crystal ball, of course, is from the Fortune Teller Tabby stamp set, the new stamp set we're using. The fox and the baby fox, the bunny and the baby bunny, are from the previously released Upon a Star stamp set. That has been out for quite a while, a year or two, I believe, but it works awesome with this. And then the cute little kitty's backside is from a pretty new stamp set as well from the last release from Lawn Fawn, and this is the Keep on Swimming stamp set, where the kitty is kind of watching the fish in the fishbowl. Also works really great with the reveal wheel. I have another card uh, that features this image that I will show or link to at the end of this video if you want more ideas on the reveal wheel. I've colored in the kitty with gray and warm gray, a little pink haze for the nose and the cheeks, and then we're going to do the tablecloth in deep blue and haze blue. And then all of the moon and stars images on the tablecloth will actually be colored with yellow and pale yellow. I went ahead and did the blue first. I think if I would do this again though, I would probably do the yellow first and this is why. It's really hard, I think, or it can be a little hard with no line coloring and especially a water-based marker like this, when you do the dark color first and then you do the light color, your light color can pick up some of that dark color and transfer it to those lighter areas. And I just was not thinking ahead when I did this. So if I did it again, I would do the light first. I wanted to mention that in case any of you um, love to do this no line coloring as well and you've run into that problem. I didn't have a ton of trouble with it, but it just would have made it a little easier. I might not have had to been quite so careful. We're just blending out towards the center of the tablecloth with our lighter marker. You can see that I use a scrap area of my cardstock to clean off the tips of my lighter markers as I'm working so that any color I might, you know, accidentally transfer, I'm cleaning that off immediately so I'm not ruining the design. So cute and fun. The reveal wheel tabby does not have to be used with the reveal wheel, or not the reveal wheel tabby, I'm sorry, the fortune teller tabby does not have to be used with the reveal wheel. So you can use this as is, you can stamp a sentiment right on the crystal ball, you do not have to use the coordinating dies that go with it. You could make this into a shaker if you want to. You can do this in a lot of different ways, but if you don't want to use the reveal wheel, you don't have to. And I love that. I love that you can use it if you want. You don't have to. You can combine it with other images. It's just lots and lots of options. And I think Lawn Fawn is fabulous at giving us lots of different options with our stamps and dies that they come out with. Um, different ways to use them, different dies to use them with. So uh, really play around with this and have tons of fun. I used blue, gray, and haze blue for the crystal ball. So where I use the haze blue with the deep blue for the tablecloth, we use the blue gray for the crystal ball for a little bit of that lighter glass type of effect. Don't forget to go back in with a black fine tip pen of some sort and draw in eyes and eye, uh, whiskers like I did for the cat there before moving on. So anytime there's a face, I always like to go back in with a black pen and add detail. 
You're going to see more of that when we get to the back of the cat and the eyes on the bunnies because those their heads are tipped back far enough that you can see their eyes. The foxes are being colored with brown and light brown. This is one of my favorite color combinations for not only foxes, but if you're doing kind of an orange tabby cat as well, this is a great color combination for that. We'll use a little flesh color for the tip of the tail. I did go back in with my darker marker and add in some more dark areas. I felt like I needed a couple places where I needed to darken that up a little bit. Add just kind of, you know, show off the cute little tail and things like that. We'll color in the small one exactly the same. I like to lay down my dark color first and then I pull that color out with my lighter color or colors depending on how many I'm using for shading and then just kind of blend out being sure again with the lighter color to clean the tip of the marker often. For the bunnies we're coloring those with beige and medium beige. So it's going to be a completely different color combination than the brown. We're just going to kind of add in our beige color and then blend out with the medium beige. There's also a light beige. You could also use the blender if you wanted to for different um, shading and effects. I kept the tail a little bit lighter. Tried not to blend out the color quite so much into that so it stays a little whiter. Just kind of a fun little detail. And then the nose on the bunnies is going to be pink haze. The cat I colored with the same colors I used for the fortune teller tabby. This kitty is from the Keep on Swimming stamp set. We're using natural gray and warm gray too. And you can see the whiskers coming out. It's facing the table, but you're going to be able to see those whiskers. So we'll want to draw those back in with a black pen here in a minute. And there's that pen detail, the eyes. I added some eyelashes to the bunny. And then we'll color in that other little bunny. And we're going to die cut all of these then with the coordinating dies. And we will use the circle shape die to die cut the center of the crystal ball out. So I colored it because I wanted the color around the edge, but we're not really going to be using that center piece. Instead, we will be coloring the reveal wheel to the same colors so that it complements. So it just the crystal ball is changing its sentiment as you move the reveal wheel. I also took a white pen and added detail to all of my images, some little highlights and things. Uh, made sure and added black pen detail anywhere there's eyes or noses on the foxes. Those are both visible, so I took a black pen and added detail to those. And then, like I said, I die cut everything. I've die cut the reveal wheel also from Bristol Smooth cardstock and we are taking our blue gray and going around the edge not being super careful that's not obviously the best coloring job but we're going to blend it out and I'm taking haze blue or the blue haze pardon me and pulling the blue gray out and then lightening it towards the center. I like to only color kind of from the score line in so that that scallop edge that you actually see over there in that notched area of the reveal wheel, that is white. You could color the whole thing though if you wanted to. This is what's going to have our stamp sentiments and what's going to change as we move the reveal wheel around and show several different sentiments. Now I did stamp and emboss. I see great things ahead. This is from the Fortune Teller Tabby stamp set and I stamped and embossed that along the bottom edge of our front panel. We're going to glue our fortune teller tabby in place. I did use the Lawn Fawn glue tube to glue this down. And then I'm going to take another phrase from the fortune teller tabby that says your future is dot 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 
Stamp that along the bottom, or pardon me, the top edge of the card with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. Then we're going to add all of our critters. And I decided to add those with foam adhesive to give them a little bit of dimension, like they're kind of sitting up and around the table. And we just don't want foam adhesive to overlap anything that already has been adhered with foam adhesive. So I'll just kind of tuck these next to each other, building this cute little scene all the way around our fortune teller tabby table. Isn't that so fun? I just think this is a really cute set and lots of great ways to use it. Plus it's just adorable. Lawn Fawn is so great at giving us our not so scary and very cute and sweet images. We got a couple more to add here and then we're going to stamp and emboss our sentiments for the crystal ball and add all of those little finishing touches to our design. So there is our last one, kind of get him put where I want him. Now, I love that Lawn Fawn has come out with the templates that help make stamping your sentiments in, or images, whatever you're putting in your reveal wheel, it makes it perfect. So I have temporarily taped the four opening template there. There is also, I don't want to tell you wrong, I believe a three opening for the circle template. So you could do three or four sentiments whatever you want to do there. And I'm just going to double check. Yes, there are. So it's really up to you. I opted to use all four and I am laying them in that template opening. So you can see how easy this template is and how it makes stamping your images or sentiments for the reveal wheel a snap. There are templates for everything I believe now. So that makes it really easy. I'm going to stamp this then. And by using the Misty, I can stamp all four at once, which is also incredible. And then we're going to emboss this with white embossing powder. You could use any color you wanted. I like the white. It just kind of goes with this design, I feel like. I probably use white embossing powder 98% of the time. It's my favorite. And then we're going to sprinkle that on. Do make sure, because we used water-based markers, make sure your background is completely dry before you do this step so that the embossing powder sticks only to that area. You can see around the edge I had a little bit there that was sticking. I just took a dry paintbrush and I'm going to wipe that away and then we will heat set our sentiments. And I love these sentiments. We've got filled with smiles, super duper, very happy, and really bright. So it's your future is really bright. You know, uh, your future is filled with smiles, your future is super duper, your future is very happy. Um, all super awesome, encouraging sentiments. After I have that done, I did die cut an outside in stitched rectangle. I uh, die cut this from a watercolor wishes kind of lavender paper. We're gonna mat this piece on. I'm using it as a guide right now so I can stamp the Reveal Wheel Sentiment Turn Me. I love being able to add that little touch there so the recipient knows that your card does something, they know to turn this. We're going to stamp the Turn Me with black ink. And then we are ready to put it all together now. Let's move all of that out of the way. Let's take a brad and we are going to take that little circle that we die cut from the reveal wheel and adhere it to the back of our colored and stamped reveal wheel. Add foam adhesive on the back of this. And then I like to temporarily tape it in place with some post-it tape. Remove the backing paper from our foam adhesive squares. And then we're going to adhere this to our backer, which in this case is that watercolor wishes paper. I'm just going to double check that's lined up before I go and add my foam adhesive all the way around this panel. 
Now this panel is a little bigger than the ones I usually use, so I did make sure to kind of keep my foam adhesive away from the edges, but I want this whole panel to be uh, sticking up a little bit. It really makes the reveal wheel work better because we've popped up the background with foam adhesive and it just gives your finger a little space to be able to pull or turn that reveal wheel. We're going to pull the backing paper off of all of our foam adhesive squares. And then we're going to place our panel right there over the background. And look how cute that is. Isn't that so much fun, you guys? I just think this is adorable. We're going to go ahead and adhere this to a white top fold card base. And then the final thing I'm going to do is just take my glue tube and I'm going to add little dabs of glue all over the background. And I'm going to take some pretty pink posh mini silver star confetti and adhere those with my crystal katana. These are such teeny tiny little pieces that this makes it easy to pick them up and pop them right in place. The glue tube will dry clear. So if there's a little glue sticking out, you're really not going to see that. But these little shimmery silver stars just add to the magical or mystical feel of a fortune teller card, I think. We've got that beautiful liquid stardust shimmer in the background that we splattered all over the sky. And this just adds a little extra something to that white space up in the sky because it's very uh, bottom heavy with all those critters surrounding the table. So this little touch balances out the card really nicely. We'll just add these kind of all over. I kept adding until I felt like I had a nice evenish mix all over my sky. I didn't want too big of blobs of glue to come out of the tip of my glue and some of those got a little bit big. Just add these last few ones and that is really going to finish up our fortune teller tabby card featuring new stamps and dies from the Lawn Fawn fall and winter release. So there is a look at our finished card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this interactive fortune teller card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.